What's going on, Faithfuls? The Nothing But Niners crew is back to bring you guys yet another special guest. Uh, today's guest is going to be offensive lineman Eric Magnuson. But before we get to that, I want to let you guys know where to find us. Um, make sure you check out the website, www.nothingbutniners.com. That is nothingbutniners.com. There you're going to be led to everything. Our social medias are there. Our Twitter and our Snapchat are Nothing But Nine ERS. Our Facebook page, Nothing But Niners. Guys, we're everywhere, okay? You're also going to find the YouTube page right here. So hit the subscribe button if you haven't done so already. Tell a friend to do the same thing, all right? And also on the website, you guys are going to find a bunch of articles. We have a slew of great writers bringing you guys fresh live content almost on a daily basis. So make sure you check it out. Uh, today, my man Zach is here with me. What's going on, Zach? How you doing? Good, man. How you doing? I'm great, man. I'm ready to get to our special guest, the man of the minute. All right, I would say hour, but we're only going to be here for a few minutes. So that's why I said yeah. minute. Eric Magnuson. What's going on, Eric? How you doing, bro? What's up, man? Doing good. Thank you for having me on. No, no problem. So I'm going to get this out of the way. What are you putting in your beard? Because it did not look like that before. <laughs> like, what the heck is going on? Uh, <laughs> nothing, man. Just, uh, just letting it grow out. You know, I, I, uh, I shaved my head, so I got to make up for it somewhere. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I hear that. All right, we're going to get down to the nitty gritty. There's a big game that's on right now. I know people want to get to it and see it. So we want to thank you so much for taking time out of your day to join us, all right? Yep. All right, so what I'd like to do is I start from the beginning. I like to backtrack. I want to take you through uh, college and being recruited. And what made you settle on Michigan? Um. Well, I had a connection to Coach Hook because he was at San Diego State before, and I grew up in San Diego County. So uh, I knew Coach Hook from recruiting and everything like that. Then when he got the job at Michigan, you know, I, I fell in love with the tradition, um, especially being an offensive lineman, had great tradition. And then, you know, just a – overall atmosphere of the school and the academics and everything combined just made me want to go out to Michigan and play. Okay. All right. So now while you were there in Michigan, you did a couple of different offensive lineman positions, right? You were guard and tackle. Did you center at all? Uh, only in practice. I never really played center in game. And so. do you have a preference between the two? Uh, I mean, I've, I've fallen in love with center. I like, I like playing center. Uh, it's cool to play center because you get to make the calls and everything like that. Um, but, I mean, kind of my blessing and also kind of be a curse is that I am versatile, so I have to be able to play all three. Absolutely. Zach? Yeah. Um, do you think – I mean, obviously, that adds to your value, that sort of versatility. Do you think that's helped you kind of get this far in your career? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I think that's what it came down to last year, why I made the team. I was able to play uh, – at that time, I was playing guard and center when the, when the final roster came out. Um, but then, obviously, during the year, I had to play tackle as well. So, um, it has definitely definitely helped me stay with the 49ers throughout last year. And then, hopefully, going into the future, uh, same thing. Just because, you know, every team can only have so many offensive linemen. If I can play all three positions, I'm, I'm only benefiting myself. Yeah, absolutely. So everyone's going to watching this, you know, you're the only other player other than Joe Staley on the team right now that has experience with Jim Harbaugh. So everyone watching this <laughs> is going to want to know what, if any crazy stories you have about Jim Harbaugh, if you just tell us what you think of the guy, how his, how his coaching style was, how does it compare to what you're going through right now with this, off uh, with this front office? <laughs> I will, I'll answer that last part first. It's completely different than how to, uh, Chris Shanahan runs the team. Um, they're them personality wise are completely different. Like Shanahan is is cool. He's laid back. He's um, you know he's more he's more one than guys. Uh, he obviously is extremely intelligent. Um, but Coach Harbaugh is Coach Harbaugh is like he is nuts. Uh, he's crazy. He's he's wild. He's full of energy. He's you know he. Uh, He's everything that you see on TV, which is kind of cool, but uh, their coaching styles are way different. Um, not that I say, like, I don't I don't necessarily like one more than the other, but it's cool having the experience of seeing Harbaugh and coming to the NFL and seeing Coach Shanahan because I couldn't have gone to a more opposite coach, I don't think. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I mean, I liked him. My experience playing with him for him in college was great. Uh, kind of turned my career around. Um, to say the least, I mean, he I played for my junior and senior year, and those were my best years playing football. Uh, he taught me taught me a lot of things, especially just like how to prepare for games. That definitely helped me coming to the NFL because I had to step ahead of 
other guys who, you know, didn't have coaches that were in NFL. All right. Zach, do you have a follow-up to that? Because if not, I want to be done with it. Yeah, no, real quick. I just wanted to say I'd imagine Jim Harbaugh is exactly like he was in that video of uh, him getting his daughter's ears pierced. And she's like eight years <laughs> old. And he's just kind of taps her on the side. He goes, suck it up, Katie. And the wife's yeah, like, Jim, he, she's eight years old. <laughs> you know, it's it's pretty funny because, uh, I don't know, for some reason people have this image of Coach Harbaugh being like, like I don't know, crazy and mean to the players or whatever, but it's the total opposite. He he is the most loyal guy to his players, but at the same time, uh, there is no like room for error or no room for losing. That's for sure, you know. So like, being tough is just you know it's expected. It's not something that is <laughs> like you're you're not applauded for being tough. That's for sure by him. <laughs> Yeah, it's like, I, I I got your back. I'll run through a wall for you. Just do your job. Don't fuck up. Okay? Exactly. Exactly. All right. Cool. All right. So let's uh, fast forward. You go undrafted. The 49ers, uh, you, you go to the 49ers and undrafted free agent. Now, at that point, you have a choice of where to go. Why the 49ers? Uh, I mean, me and my agent spoke before the draft, and we knew being undrafted is definitely a big possibility. Uh, so we kind of made a list of teams that, best fit me and best gave me like gave me the best opportunity to make the, the roster because that was the ultimate goal um and the 49ers were actually the top team on that because before the draft two years ago they didn't have much depth at the offensive line position so uh that was one of the top teams and you know i, I didn't have any contact with the 49ers pre-draft so i didn't really think that was a possibility but uh also the assistant offensive line coach here adam stenovich he was my uh my GA, my grad assistant at Michigan. So I had that connection with him. So, I mean, it just, it made the, it made the decision a little bit easier having a familiar face in the offensive line room. Okay. All right. So I did some research and I was looking at the, uh, I looked up some PFF grades and they were like singing your praises, the preseason game against the chiefs. Do you remember that game? Yeah, briefly. I mean, you the first, were the first preseason game. Yeah, you were the sixth highest graded um, guard in the entire NFL. Now that that that's a lot because during the preseason everyone's playing, so uh, like that. I just thought that was insane. You were the sixth highest out of all of them. I just wanted to say that. Um, so when you when you look at things like that and you when you reflect on your play, uh, what do you think some of your strengths are versus some of your weaknesses? Oh, uh, uh, strengths. Um... You know, I think I have a good feel for for playing offensive line. Uh, I don't know how you take that, but I mean, like, I got a I got a good understanding of football and a good understanding usually of you know our schemes and everything like that, which helps me get in the right position. Um, I think I got good hands. I'm a good pass blocker because I'm good at using my hands. Um, but you know, I use I'm not I'm never been a big strong guy that could overpower anybody, so I've always had to use my other strength with it which is, you know, being able to be in the right position at the right time, being good with my hands and and just working my ass off and, you know, finishing through the play and everything like that. So that's what I try to bring. Um, weaknesses, like I said, you know, I've never, for whatever reason, as hard as I work in the weight room, I've never been like a, a big, strong guy. So, uh, you know, going against defensive linemen, that their whole thing is power can kind of cause me some problems. But um, that's definitely something I need to get – get better as being a uh, stronger offensive lineman. Zach? Uh, just real quick, touching back on going undrafted, we talked to Adrian Colbert uh, not too long ago, and he was kind of saying that he went in the seventh round, but he almost would have preferred to go undrafted at that point so he could pick his team. Um, is there? Would you have preferred to go in the seventh round, or did you think it was better for you to be able to pick where you went? Uh, you know, I hear guys say that all the time that, later round it's almost better to go and draft it because you have that choice but I mean the way I think about it since I was since I played started playing sports and started caring about sports my whole goal and my dream was to be drafted so uh coming from undrafted guy I would say I'd rather get drafted in the seventh round (laughs) um you know financially it's not that big of a difference being in the seventh round draft pick or being undrafted um but I mean at the end of the day you're still drafted you can always say you're drafted no matter what like I get what AC is where he's coming from, but 
till when they see is, is a grandpa, and you can tell his grandchildren. You know, I got I got drafted back in 2017, so that's a pretty cool thing to all say. Yeah, oh yeah, I understand that. All right, so let's fast forward to the season. Uh, you got you got playing time in what three of the weeks, right? Weeks eight, nine, and twelve, and then yeah. in week twelve. Uh, following the game, Coach Shanahan goes to the mic and says that uh, you injured your foot. He said that it happened early in the first half and that you just mustered through. Uh, he, he sang the praises for you. He said it shows how tough he is uh, mentally and physically because he knew how depleted we were at the tackle position at that time. So when you hear your coach like singing your praises like that, and I would I, almost unwarranted. He didn't have to say how tough you were. Uh, but he, he went up there and did all that anyway. Like, what does that do for you, your psyche, your your mentality? Like, does it, does it mean anything special to you, or was it just, you know, all right, thanks, Coach, for having my back? No, it was definitely special. Um, like you said, it was unwarranted. He didn't have to say anything. Um, you know, it, he, a lot of players get injured and don't say anything. So for him to say that gave me a lot of confidence, gave me, um, you know, let me know that he sees the little things and that he appreciates that. Um you know, it, it was something a lot of coaches wouldn't do. Like I said, you know, not always trying to compare him to Coach Harbaugh, but Coach Harbaugh kind of expects that out of his players. Where with Shanahan, he'll he'll let you he'll let you know that like he appreciates you and he appreciates what you're doing. And for a young guy, especially undrafted guy, to have the head coach say that to the media gave me a lot of confidence and um, makes me want to come back and work harder for him. Yeah, hell yeah. He, he flat out said, you know, he, I have a lot of respect for that. Like that. I don't know. Like, I don't know. Men saying to another man, like, I have respect for you. I think that's a big thing, even in the locker room in the football setting. Uh, Zach? Yeah, um, I know there was a lot of speculation when Kyle Shanahan was hired that it might have been a big deal that he was too young and there might not have been that big of an age difference between the players and the coach. and That might cause sort of discrepancy in the locker room. Do you feel that's any sort of the case or do you think he's just as, you know, strict as any coach or good as any coach that would be older uh, I mean, I don't really, you know, I haven't noticed the age thing at all. So I think people respect him because of how intelligent he is. Um, you know, you have a five minute meeting with him about football. You're going to walk away really impressed just because he knows football as well as anybody I've ever met in my whole life. Um, whether he was 25 or 65, he knows football that well. It doesn't matter. <laughs> at the end of the day, he's, he's good at what he does. And I think people respect him for that. But also, I think it's an advantage for him being so young because he's also kind of – he's almost, almost in the loop as far as, like, trends, you know. Uh, he'll, he'll say things that are, like, kind of funny, things that are going around in the internet that are funny, or he'll make references to songs, or he'll do things that, like, an older coach wouldn't do just because he's younger and he kind of – he's kind of more in – more close to our age group. So he, he – I don't know how to say it, but he kind of gets what's going on a little bit better. Yeah, like, like take, hanging out with 50 Cent? Like, yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, yeah, I mean. He took the word right out of my mouth. Right out of my mouth. Right, All right. right. So how's the foot doing right now? You you 100%? You ready to get back in there and kick some ass? Yeah, yeah, I'm 100%. Got cleared back in March, so I'm ready to go. That's what I like to hear. All right, so we're, we're almost done with all this. I want to ask you about uh, this upcoming season and what to expect. Uh, right before then, um, the, I want to ask about the the room, the offensive lineman room. Uh, Zane Beatles recently cut, and before that, people were saying that uh, you two were in the the competitive spot for that roster spot there because both of you guys are, you know, the versatility was similar. You guys can swing and everything. So uh, one, uh, the feeling of when a fellow lineman gets cut. I know you guys are close in there. Well, I, I assume you do. So you can correct me if I'm wrong, but. Uh, that assumption is that, you know, it's a close knit group. Everyone looks out for each other and things like that. How, what's the reaction when a, f a friend or an acquaintance like that uh, gets cut? Like, how, how does that affect you guys? Man, it sucks. Uh, especially for like Zane, because, um, you know, we kind of, I guess we kind of were in competition, but even last year when, when I was playing and I guess he could, argue, like, he thought probably he should be playing or whatever it was, you know, he, there was never a moment where he was, where he was, you know, being negative towards me or anything like that. He was being professional the whole time. He would help me, he, stuff like that. So uh, to see an older guy like that get let go, you know, strictly off financial reasons kind of sucks. Um, and that and it, it's part of the business, like people say, it, that's just the way it is, which which is uh, not fun. But, I mean, I'm, it's, it's 
you're glad when it's not you, but you're upset when it's your friend. So, I mean, there's no, there's no positive out of it, really. I can't say anything. I can't say anything positive because that would just be messed up. <laughs> Zach? Have you spoken to the, the new kid in town, Mike McGlinchey? Yeah, yeah, they just started working out with us this week, actually. I like him. How's yeah. he? You get along well? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think he'll fit right in with the offensive line room. Uh, seen, he's a hard worker for sure. He seems like a, you know, from what I've seen, obviously he must be pretty damn good. He got drafted in the first round. So uh, as, long, as long as he works hard and does what he's supposed to do, uh, I could see him fitting in very well. I tweeted the other day, he's the oldest looking young guy I've ever seen. <laughs> He does. He's got. A, he's got like a. He's definitely got like an older body. Like he's built. Like he's built like somebody who's been like in the league for a while. You know, it's impressive to see. But that's also why he was drafted in the first round. So <laughs> that's cool. All right, so we're gonna wrap this thing up soon. I want to talk about personal goals for this upcoming season for you. Now, obviously, everyone wants to make the team and everyone wants to be a starter and things like that, right? But is there is there an aspect of your game? I know you talked about you know your strength and things like that. But is there anything that you want like people to be like, damn, like like you know he came in and he freaking killed it, like you know anything like that at all about a certain uh, attribute or anything like that, or you just you know my goal is to make the team and that's my focus right now. I think my number one goal right now is to to learn our system as far as the plays go, like the back of my hand. Uh, that was a strength of mine in college, and I want to get to that level with with this system um if i could if i could be recognized as one of the most intelligent offensive linemen and one of the offensive linemen know the system the best i'd be really impressive and then also if i could you know be a a dominant run blocker in the zone system would definitely definitely be uh something that i would hang my hat on because uh the system is different anything i've played in before it's a little bit a little bit more challenging for me but if i'm able to conquer this then i'd be very happy with myself and it, it may be a little too early for this follow-up, but uh, any insight on how they're going to use you this year? I know you talked about, you know, your passion for playing center. Uh, we know that you can do guard and tackle, um, but they're they're kind of thin at the tackle positions, kind of, sort of, you know, like how – any insight on how they're going to use you? Uh, I wish I had insight, but the thing about it is uh, last year I would have never guessed in a million years I'd be playing tackle, so um, – you just never know, especially like for me. Like I say, it's a blessing and it's a curse. It's a blessing because I'll be able to, you know, hopefully make a career out of it being versatile, but also it's a curse because I have to be ready to play anything at any moment, which um, is a little bit more difficult than than you think it is, but uh, it's a blessing also. So I have to I have to take it for what it is. Okay, Zach, have you um, have you had any contact with Jarek Jer- McKinnon? And do you think he'll fit in well into this this running scheme? Contact with who? I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Uh, Jarek McK- Jarek McKinnon. Right? Oh yeah, 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 definitely. Uh, yeah, I think he'll fit in perfectly. I mean, it's what we need, right? Fast guys to get to the edge. Uh, it's what made Atlanta so great when Shanahan was there. So uh, I think he'll fit in great. He uh, great personality. So I like him so far. All right, so we're going to get ready to let you go, man. We've got some silly questions for you. We're done with the football talk. I promise you, no more no more of that. We're just going to ask you a couple <laughs> silly questions really quick. Uh, I'm going to let Zach kick this one off also, okay? All right, what's your, your favorite song to kind of scream, sing at the top of your lungs when you're driving alone? Ooh, that's, that's difficult, but I don't know why, but uh, Linkin Park, their whole album, uh, like – Meteor or whatever it's called. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I could sing that whole album as loud as I as long as loud as I possibly can in the car. And, um, you know, I that's one of the first first CDs I ever bought as a little kid. So that's probably why. Do you uh? Is that like what you listen to, like to get yourself amped up for a game or a workout or anything like that, or do, are you more of a mellow guy? I'm more mellow. You know, I, I'm really into reggae, but that album just sits well with me. <laughs> that's awesome. Go ahead, Zach. Go ahead. All right. So I always want to know about your per- a personal, like uh, a guilty pleasure. I know that he just said that, you know, you like to sing Linkin Park, but something that people might not know about you, like, oh, I, I really like cartoons or, you know, some- something like that. Like uh, any-, any kind of personal uh, guilty pleasure. I-, I love music. I'm a big music fan. Uh, I go to 
every concert I can go to of bands I like, and I watch, you know, every Netflix or any documentary that comes out on bands. Uh, that's a uh, that's something I'm really into, and hopefully something I can get into one day. But you know, recently I just got my first ever uh, Xbox. I've ever had a game system in my life, so I've been playing playing some Madden and uh, NBA 2K. There you go. All right, that's what I'm talking about. I'm I'm sad that it's Xbox. I'm a PlayStation guy, but I understand it. I get it. There's yeah. a lot of people out there, man. They, they love that damn Xbox. They're right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, Zach. Go ahead, man. Um, okay, you kind of shined on it there with music, but what would you be doing if you weren't a football player? Yeah, I think I'd be working in the music industry. Uh, you know, I'm not talented with instruments, but I think I'd definitely be in the business side of music, whether it be managing or uh, working for a label or working for venues, whatever song. I just have a lot of passion for music and live music, especially. So something in that field, probably. That's awesome. All right. So I got a little corny joke for you. I, I did a little riddle uh, yesterday when we did another interview with a different player. So I got a little corny joke for you. Feel free to share it around the locker room. It's, it's <laughs> so you probably aren't going to want to share it with anybody. All right? all right. Let's see if you can figure this out. Why don't teddy bears ever order dessert? I'm not sure. Because they're always stuffed. Oh. Uh. <laughs> Maracha. All right, little oh, yeah. little corny joke, little That's icebreaker. Right. Do you have a go-to joke if you had to like talk, tell someone a joke? You have a go-to joke? Oh man, I guess I got some jokes. We have to tell a lot of jokes in the offensive line room, but uh they're a little bit crude and probably not the best I want to be saying oh, on this. Come on, on, on it's on okay. Give me a bad image, so. Oh, all right. (laughs) All right, fine. Are you absolutely sure you don't want to? This is this is not a rated PG podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I I actually did a like a TV show in college with me and another offensive lineman, and uh, we started saying some bad things, and it didn't end well for me. So I learned my lesson about what I say on camera. So. My man, that's an intelligent <laughs> offensive lineman right there, guys. He learned from his mistakes. That's exactly what we want here at the 49ers, man. <laughs> Eric, thank you so much for joining us, man. We really, really appreciate it. Uh, the final words are going to be for you. If there's anything you want to let the fans know about yourself, a message for the faithful or anything like that, the floor is yours. If not, that's it. No, I mean, I appreciate you guys having me on. It's cool. Uh, I'm excited for this season. Uh, I think the expectations are high, and they deserve to be high because we have a very good team. So look forward to this year. Absolutely, man. Thank you again for joining us. I really appreciate it. Zach, you too. You guys taking the time out. Uh, Faithful, you guys know what time it is. We're ready to get in there, kick some ass this season. Um, Above all else, stay faithful. We're out. Thank you.